Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Homain TV. Today we are going to talk about creating or modifying cues in Dorico, one of the most amazing features in Dorico. If you are new to the channel or new to Dorico tutorials, please make sure to check the other videos as they can give you a better insight into Dorico. Link will be in the description below. Now let's take a look at our project. If you want to add cues, there is always two ways. One is via the popover and the other one is through the right panel. Now let's try the popover first. For example, if I want to add an entrance cue for my flute here, I will just simply highlight the spot and press Shift U on my keyboard. After the popover opens, enter the name of the instrument that you want to be used as cue. So for example, I'm going to put violin, arrow down and enter and voila. As you can see, the notes from a violin are added and you have the tiny indicators to increase or decrease the length of your cue. So you can just grab it and increase or decrease the length of your cue here. And don't worry about playback. Whatever it's here, Dorco will not play it back in your score. And now let me switch to page view. Let's see, page view down here. As you notice, the notes are gone, but there is a small flag indicating that there is a cue here. The nice thing is that you can also add and also remove cues from your page view as well. So I can just delete it, shift U, and I'm gonna add a violin again. Super nice. But if you want to view them, you can go to galley view. On the other hand, you can also add cues directly into your instrumental parts. So for that, highlight an instrument. So let's say I wanna highlight this violin here by clicking on it and I'll press W to enter into the instrumental part. And the procedure is the same as before. So just highlight and then shift and U. Now we're gonna add flute here. Oop. Flutey. Oop. Sorry. There you go. And I'm gonna grab it. And there is the flute. And also I just saw something here that maybe is nice to know. It's completely unrelated, but if you ever have a situation that you change the name of your project, but it doesn't change in your parts, it's because that you changed it in your, uh, in your score right here. So if you double click in it, you change it from here. But the best way is to change it is via the setup mode, which I already explained before. So you go here, project info, and then you change it. Okay. So, that was a nice one, so maybe some of you will encounter it. I thought it would be nice to say. Uh, all right, and that was the parts. Let's double check again. Yeah, there it is. Mm -hmm. And so this was the basics, which uh, usually is enough. But if you want to learn more about the Q tool in Dorico, keep on watching. And uh, since we're here now, make sure to like and also subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on the future videos. I post up to four videos per month. All right, now let's check the right panel. And I'm gonna just go to the panels and find the cues. Where are you? There it is. I'm gonna open it. We have a bunch of cool stuff here. The first button is to create a cue and it's the same as pressing shift and U on your keyboard. Now the actual coolness starts here. There is a box here titled suggest cues, which uh, what it does is that it gives you suggestions for cues in different instruments. Forget about these two options now and all you need to do is to press the update button. So I'm going to go to Kiali view 
I mean, you can also do it in, in the page view, but I like galley view better for adding parts because you can see them. Okay, now I'm just gonna put both of these in consider. It doesn't really matter. You, you will learn it in a moment, but then I'm just gonna create press Q. Well, as you can see, nothing is happening. And don't worry, yeah, Dorico is not broken and your computer is also not broken. You don't see anything because the suggest Q option works by finding rests behind instruments that are longer than a certain duration. And this timing threshold for the duration can be modified here. Let's change it to 15 seconds. I'm gonna put it to 15. Yeah, and then I'm gonna click on update. And as you can see in my score, there is one spot that is highlighted. It's behind my pizzicatos in the cello. Now let's make it even less. So I'm gonna check it to five seconds. Update. And as you can see, there's another suggestion there. The limit is five seconds, so it wouldn't go lower than that. Other than the red highlights, there is also uh, another way to see the suggestions. And that is within the tiny box on the right. And to understand it, Dorico is saying the instrument flute starts on bar 12 and has six seconds of empty or rest behind it. So it will be around here. So basically it says from here, uh, from bar 12, there is the notes, but then there is six seconds of rest. So approximately here, uh, there's empty space behind it. And the other one is saying, the other one is right here. The other one is saying cello on bar nine, it starts. And then there is 16 seconds of pause at least behind it. So basically it will be the whole, uh, the whole piece right here. Well, piece. Yeah, I just, uh, <laughs> I just uh, wrote down some notes for the sake of the tutorial. Okay, so if at any moment you didn't like any of these suggestions, you can just click on them and then uh, ignore. Just click on ignore and they will go away. But if you want to bring them back, click on update. And if you want to just work on your score and this is bugging you, and you just click on the highlight suggestions, you can just take it away. You still have them here but then uh, just the indicators are gone. And there's also another tiny box here, which is really nice for, uh, for example, for orchestral instruments, is that it will give you suggestions of cues. So if I click on this flute, you will see that it's saying that the flute has violin and cello somewhere around it. So behind it or a little bit before, something like that. So then you can choose easier uh, which one to put. And uh, for example, if I change it to cello, then you can see the indicators are changing now. So it's saying there's a flute part and then there's a violin part that you can uh, use for this cello. So basically imagine it is flute and violin that is suggesting it's for here. So it's saying there is a flute here and there is a violin here that you can use for this cue. Now, finally, let's see what these two switches are. Rehearsal marks and cues. You see, both of them have consider and ignore options. The rehearsal marks uh, setting tells Dorico to either consider or ignore suggesting cues within the specified duration. Uh, sounds complicated, I know, but uh, I mean, for me it was also, but it really, it's not. Let's try it out. So. I'm gonna add a rehearsal mark here, let's say here, by pressing Shift and A. And as you can see, the area that was uh, recommended by Dorico is gone. And that is because Dorico is now considering your rehearsal mark as a cue. So it's not giving you a suggestion here anymore. If I ignore it, it will come back. So basically it's giving you some choices. And this goes the same as with cues. 
So if you have cues there, it's going to uh, ignore them or consider them uh, as, as cues for other instruments. And uh, in the next video, I will tell you more details about cues so you can uh, modify them and uh, customize them more to your likings. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did, it would mean a lot if you uh, like, comment and uh, subscribe and also ring the notification bell. And till the next video, ciao ciao and Homayun out.